small and extra whipped cream milk jelly. Alright. Hi guys, welcome back to As Told by Ray. I'm Tere, and if you are new here, welcome. And if you are not, hey y'all. So, today's video is going to be a continuation of my credit series. I did the first video on basically explaining what credit is. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys five tips um, pretty much geared towards my recent graduates who are starting out in life and need to go ahead and establish their credit. And also for anyone who has pretty who has damaged their credit and is looking to rebuild it. Now, anyone else can use these tips if you like, but those are the two two main groups that I'm focusing on in this video that I feel like will benefit the most. So before we get into the video, please make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so that you get notified when I do my uploads. I upload every week on Mondays. Also, once you get to the end of the video, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and leave me some comments if you, if this is the kind of thing that you would like to see on my channel, if you would like to see more of it, um, just go ahead and let me know when you do that. It gives me an indication of what you guys want to see and what you guys don't want to see. Whew. Now that we've got all the pleasantries out the way, let's go ahead and get into the five tips that I have for establishing your credit. So I have my notebook here and I've written down my tips because I did not want to forget and kind of go off on a tangent and this be very unorganized. So I decided to write it down so that way it's easy for you guys to listen to and I don't end up with a 20 minute video. Okay, so the first thing is getting a secured credit card. Now, for those of you who don't know what a secured credit card is, a secured credit card is basically a line of credit that you will establish with a bank that is backed by a security deposit. So you're gonna give a bank, the number that I'm gonna use is $250. You're gonna go to your bank, you're gonna give them $250 in cash, and they are in turn are going to give you a secured credit card. Now that $250 that you gave them now becomes your credit limit. So you're only able to spend the money that you put in on a secured credit card. Now you're probably thinking like, okay, me giving the bank money, what is this gonna do? Well, that leads me to tip number two. You are gonna go ahead and make purchases on that card. Now make small purchases. You don't wanna go over 30% of that card limit because that will start to negatively impact your credit and that is reversing exactly what we're trying to do. So I recommend making small purchases, um, things that are kind of reoccurring. So I suggest like your Netflix, your Hulu, um, your Apple Music, whatever your subscription services are that you know is a guaranteed amount that's going to be spent every single month. Do something small like that because what you're trying to do is just get you're just trying to show that you are actively using this car, so that way you are able to make payments on it. So doing something small like that, don't really, you know, go over about, don't go over twenty dollars on that because you don't want to really get it out of control to where a point that you're not going to be able to pay the money back. So go ahead and make small reoccurring purchases on your card, and then every month when you get your bill, go ahead and make your payments. Now, even though you have a secure credit card, the bank is still going to report your activity to the three major credit bureaus and it is going to show up on your credit and then your score is going to be generated based on those payments that you are making. Tip number three is to continue to make deposits onto your account to increase the credit limit that you have. That is going to look fantastic on your credit report is going to show that okay originally when you open this account you started at 250 dollars and then the limit continued to increase which means in their eyes it's showing oh the bank is being able to trust you more you know trust you with more money and now let's say you want to go ahead and deposit money until you get to 500 dollars now you can do this in whatever increments that you want 
if you feel comfortable, okay, I'm gonna deposit an extra $20, extra $30, extra $100, whatever you have to give, go ahead and deposit it to that card to increase the limit. Now, number four is going to be at the maturity date of the um, card agreement, the bank is going to give you your money back. Grant that you've made all of your payments on time and you have not done anything to negatively affect this account. The bank is gonna give you that $500 that we have now deposited. The bank is gonna say, here you go. We thank you for making your payments. We now trust you with this credit limit and we are gonna give you this $500 back and we are gonna turn this into an unsecured credit card. So unsecured means that it's just like any other credit card that any other person would be able to get. Your money is now no longer tied to this card. That is great. And a lot of times banks will increase the credit limit for you. So we may have started out with $250 in the beginning, we increase it to 500, and your bank say, may say, okay, we're gonna give you the 500 back and now we're gonna increase it to $1,000. That's better for you. That looks great on your credit report and you will still continue with the same trend. Don't go and start making all these wild, crazy purchases that we're not gonna be able to afford to pay back. Keep it simple. Don't spend over the 30%. Don't really change your habits. Tip number five is that $500 that we receive back from our secure credit card, we are going to take that $500 again with our bank and we are gonna get a secured personal loan. Now, a secured personal loan is basically the same thing as a secured credit card. We are gonna give a deposit to the bank to hold for us and they are in exchange gonna give us a loan. Don't get a crazy loan amount. You know, get something small, maybe like another $1,000. If the bank is gonna give you $1,000, you will make your monthly payments. The bank will set the payment schedule for you and you will make monthly payments to pay that $1,000 back and in turn, get your deposit back. That is what you want to do. So when we do that, that is now giving us two lines of credit. That is giving us our credit card that we will have, which is a revolving line of credit. And then we will have an installment line of credit, which will come from the loan. Those two kinds of credit are pretty much key. Those are the two kinds that they are, and those look excellent on your credit report. They look excellent to other lenders when it's time for you know you to buy a home. They like to see, okay, you have a diverse credit portfolio. You don't just want to have all credit cards or all loans. You want to have a good mix. And that's where that's basically what we're doing is we're getting you started with having a good mix of credit. Now, we've gone through the five tips. That was pretty easy, short and sweet five easy things that you can do. But also, if you are a student and you're just graduating from college, if you have student loans, yes, it may seem like it is like impossible to pay back, but look on the bright side, you already have an installment line of credit with your student loans. Now you just have to go ahead and make your payments. So you may not need to get that additional loan with that $500 because you already have an installment loan but you really need to go ahead and pay back your student loans. When you're fresh out of college, it's easier because typically your income is lower, so you can get a lower payment amount versus the astronomically insane numbers that they are gonna give you once your six month period is over. Go ahead and sign up for those repayment programs. Put your income base in. I recommend the income driven ones because when you're making less money, it's a lot easier to have something that's in line with your income. Make those payments continuously every single month on time and your credit is gonna go up and it's gonna benefit you because that balance on your student loans is going to go down. And when you go out in the world and you try to do other things and like add more debt, like purchasing a car or when you get ready to buy your home, that balance of student loans because you've been making your on-time payments for it is not going to extremely negatively affect you and really impact the amount of the loan that you're able to take out. So yes, that is the that is really all that I have. So I really tried to make this video as short and sweet as possible for you guys. Um, so it's easily digestible and I can get as much information across in a short amount of time. So yeah, that is really all that I have for today's video. If you did not subscribe and you watched all of my talking, 
please go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Give this video a thumb up, thumbs up, and leave me comments. And then I will see you guys next week in whatever episode I decide to do. So thank you guys for watching as always, and I will see you guys.